the reason why Casey Anthony is resurfacing is because she's going to have a, I'm assuming it's a documentary. It's going to be a documentary. She's going to be in it and it's going to be available on Peacock. And I think Peacock is, is Peacock the one that's free? No, I think Peacock gets its paywall, right? Because I think the Amber Heard thing was on Peacock and I think you have to pay in order to watch it. I don't fucking remember. But uh, yeah, Casey Anthony is back. And you know, I've, I've actually wanted to watch the whole Casey Anthony trial because it's just as interesting and as crazy as like the Jodi Arias stuff. However, Casey Anthony was not guilty. Um, the jury found her not guilty. And the only thing that they found her guilty on was like lying to the cops. But her entire story, the trial stuff, is it, it's pretty fucking wild. And I hope one day we do have to get a chance to take a whole look into that. Haven't we learned from Dahmer? We don't give murderers screen time. What about Dahmer? Dahmer's still getting fucking screen time. <laughs> I think it's important to not give people the limelight and to adore them, give them like prestige or anything. But I think it's important to learn about these individuals, right? So, like, with Dahmer, it depends on, like, how they're presenting it. Some people present Dahmer as if he's, like, oh, my God, this is, like, the coolest, most fucking awesome serial killer ever. Blech. Okay? What's important about Dahmer is that we learn from Jeffrey Dahmer. And then, hopefully, we're able to prevent other cases like Dahmer from happening. Or just maybe, you know, keep an eye out for motherfuckers like Dahmer and make sure that, you know, you don't have one living amongst you. So. Casey interview. A, B, C marker. Saw sticks. 2011, Casey Anthony was accused of murdering her daughter. She was found not guilty. Why talk to me now when you're not getting creative control? Oh, is that it? It's just, that's it? Okay, it's just a little teaser thing. In the documentary, uh, Casey reports claims that she fell asleep with two-year-old Kaylee on top of her on June 16, 2008, only to be awoken by her dad in the middle of the night with Kaylee missing and George asking where she was. Casey says it didn't make sense for Kaylee to be gone because she was the kid that would never leave a room without telling her. She claims George eventually presented her with Kaylee's dead body, which was soaking wet and cold and allegedly told Casey she had caused this. Casey then claims he took Kaylee's body and disappeared. And again, according to People's Review. Casey's theory all these years later is George allegedly smothered Kaylee with a pillow to knock her out, drown her in the above ground pool. Casey says she doesn't believe Kaylee would be able to get in there on her own. And she says there was no ladder. Here's the thing, though. Wasn't there search results that came up, like her search history, where it was just like how to kill a child or something? Or like, um, was it chloroform? And like, didn't she have some really sketch ass search results on her fucking computer? What is she now saying? The like, well, it was on my computer because my dad was on there searching it. Is that what she's trying to say? Casey had already accused George of sexually a her when she was a child. And that came like later in the trial, if I remember correctly. And of disposing Kaylee's body, claiming he vehemently denied in court. But now she's taking it a step further by suggesting he planned the whole thing. Kaylee's death included. People reports Casey says she believes her father had moved her on, have moved on to her kid and wanted to hide it by getting rid of Kaylee and framing Casey. As for why it took Casey so long to report her missing, yeah, Casey, why did you take so long? She said she was under the delusion Kaylee was still alive. <laughs> I don't, oh my God, what is this story? She was under the delusion that Kaylee was still alive. Apparently in denial, she died. And allegedly following her dad's instruction in the aftermath. Wait, doesn't this kind of conflict with each other? She was under the illusion that she was alive. Doesn't that conflict with the denial that she died? And allegedly following her dad's instruction in the aftermath. Mm, I don't know if I believe that. Of course, you know, the jury acquitted Casey of murder, manslaughter, and child abuse. She was found guilty of lying to the cops. That's it. Casey didn't stand during the trial. She never spoken out publicly about the death of Kaylee. That is, until now, the doc officially airs November 29th. Good Lord. Yeah, it's just a lot of it just doesn't really seem to make sense, right? If you still have a kid, why throw the child in the pool? I guess he was to say that like, oh, you know, the dad was trying to frame it as, oh, she drowned in the pool in the middle of the night. But does that really make sense? First look, she looks guilty to me. I may be wrong, but the eyes don't lie. She was found not guilty due to the severity of the punishment. She was up for a death penalty. That freaked the jury out with her conscience and all that. Oh, really? Did the jury actually go on like, did they ever interview and say that? This is even crazier than Jody's story, and that's quite a feat. Yeah, I definitely want to look more into the Casey Anthony trial because 
I uh, I looked into it like years ago, but there's a lot of like I guess like details that I may have forgotten. But because I think um, if I remember correctly, she 30 days after she daughter her daughter went missing when she was questioned by the police and by the way she didn't go to the police on her own her mom found out the daughter was gone or so her granddaughter had been gone and her mom was like what the fuck like why haven't you called the cops or anything and then casey's like eh, i don't know and then like i think when the cops came she was like well um my daughter was last seen with our babysitter and the babysitter's name is like i don't know she like blamed like a hispanic woman named zanny or something and people were like oh she probably gave the zanny nickname because it sounded like xanax or something like some some dumb shit like that oh god Anthony has remained in seclusion since then, although a judge ruled that she must serve years of probation. Oh, a year? A year of probation stemming from her 2010 conviction of check fraud charges. A uh, what? I'm ashamed in many ways of the person that I was, she told Morgan, reflecting on the past interviews. Even then, that wasn't who I am. I'm 26 now. I've gone through hell. Kaylee was last seen June 16, 2008, but that was not reported missing until a month later, July 15, 2008, when Casey's mother, Cindy Anthony, tracked her daughter down and demanded answers regarding Kaylee's whereabouts. Investigators searched for the child for five months, eventually finding Kaylee's skeletal remains in the woods less than a mile from her grandparents' Orlando home. Prosecutors allege Casey Anthony used chloroform to render her daughter unconscious and then duct tape her mouth and nose to suffocate her. Oh, my God. They allege that she put the child's body in the trunk of the car for a few days before disposing it. Yeah, because they said the trunk of the car, I think when investigators looked at it, they, like, smelled, they said it smelled like, like like a like a body that has been decomposing but i think she was like oh it was actually like trash bags that left in my car some shit like that right casey and anthony's defense attorneys maintained that kaylee was not murdered they said the child drowned in anthony's above ground pool on july 16 and that casey anthony and her father george anthony panicked upon finding her there and covered upon cover up the death George Anthony denied that in testimony. Oh, he testified too. I really want to watch his testimony, actually. Though Anthony's trial made national headlines, she has since dropped largely out of sight. She surfaced in January when a video diary, apparently recorded in October, found its way on YouTube. <laughs> Wait, is it still up? In that video, Anthony talks to a computer about a dog she adopted. She wore dark rim glasses. Her naturally brunette hair was colored blonde. Ooh, who else was colored blonde? Hmm. Anthony told Morgan she didn't trust law enforcement and the public image of her is still wildly inaccurate. I've never been a party girl. I don't drink now. I probably had a handful of beers since I've been on probation. I'm not making gazillions of dollars at the hands of other people or trying to sell myself to anyone willing to throw a couple dollars at me. Ah. <laughs> the character of me is out there and it couldn't be further from the truth. Casey's trial was infuriating. She took them on a wild goose chase. Yep, wasted a lot of time. Her mom smelled, oh, her mom said that it smelled like death. Her own mother 911 calls said the trunk smelled like something had died in it. I left trash bags in my trunk every night and the smell stung, but it's not rotting flesh smell. Yeah, apparently like decomposing human flesh has a very distinct smell. So August 9, 2005, Casey Anthony, 19, gives birth to a daughter, Kaylee Marie Anthony. The identity of Kaylee's father has not been publicly revealed. Uh, June 16, 2008, Kaylee is reportedly seen alive for the last time. July 15, 2008, Casey's mother, Cindy Anthony, reports that Kaylee is missing. July 16, 2008, Anthony is arrested for child neglect, giving false statements and obstruction. So this is the day after. She tells police that her daughter vanished after she left her with a babysitter named Zenaida Fernandez Gonzalez, who had disappeared. And the Zenaida Fernando Gonzalez, um, her nickname was like Zanny. July 17, 2008, officers searched Anthony's car. Oh, and didn't she lie about where she worked too? She said she worked at... Oh my God, this is like all coming back to me. Didn't she say she worked at Disney? The officers went there with her to her workplace. She acted like she worked there. The employees had no idea who the fuck she was. And then finally, when she was actually there at work, she was like, okay, just kidding. Like, I, I don't work here. Oh my God. <laughs> we have to recover this case. This is like all coming back to me now. Holy shit. Officers search Anthony's car and a cadaver dog picks up the scent of human decomposition. That's right, the dog. But I think there was something weird iffy because didn't they have another cadaver dog that didn't pick it up? Fuck, I, I, this case was so fucking messy. Huh? Authority says an, they did an air sample test. Authorities say an air sample test from Anthony's car indicate there were human remains in the trunk. October 14, 2008, a grand jury indicts Anthony on capital murder and all the charges she pleads not guilty. Um, December 11, 2008, a skeletal remains were found in a wooded area near Anthony home by a utility worker. December 19, 2008, authorities announced remains have been identified as Kaylee Anthony. 
April 13, 2009, prosecutors say they will seek death penalty, reversing an early decision not to pursue capital punishment. April 2010, the original judge assigned to the case, Stan Strickland, recuses himself and is replaced by Judge Melvin Perry Jr. Wait, why did he recuse himself? May 9, 2011, jury selection begins. May 24, 2011, the prosecution and defense deliver opening statements in Orlando Courthouse. Uh, okay, deliver opening statements. Forensic expert, sorry, June 6, 2011, forensic expert Arpad Voss testifies that the only possible explanation for the odor in Anthony's car trunk is the presence of decomposing human body. June 9, 2011, Anthony becomes ill and Judge Perry calls the court into recess for the day. June 15, the prosecuting, prosecution rests. June 30, defense rests. Anthony does not testify. You know, what really hurt Geraldine when she testified was that... Um, she testified. <laughs> she shouldn't have testified at all. Um, July 5, 2011. The seven women and five men of the jury deliberate for 10... What? They only deliberate for 10 hours and 40 minutes? They deliberate longer in the Depp Hurt trial. Before coming back with a verdict of not guilty of first degree murder. Oh, wow. I had no idea they deliberate for only 10 hours. I thought they deliberate for like days. Huh. Before coming back with a verdict of not guilty of first degree murder aggravated child abuse and aggravated manslaughter of a child anthony is found guilty of four misdemeanor counts of providing false information to law enforcement fuck man do we get should we get the court transcripts anthony is sentenced to four years in jail with credit for time served she's also fined a thousand for each count anthony's released from jail august 11 2011 a report is released by florida department of children and family concluding that anthony is responsible for the death of her daughter the report says the actions or the lack of actions by the alleged per perpetrator ultimately resulted or contributed to the death of a child. September 15, 2011, Judge Perry rules that Anthony owes authorities nearly 98000 for the cost of investigating Kaylee's disappearance. Days later, he orders her to pay an additional 119000 to the police, bringing it to more than 217000 Oh my God, I hope she had to pay for the full fucking amount. Uh, June 12, 2012, an exclusive interview with CNN. Anthony tells Pierce Morgan that she didn't kill Kaylee and that she's never been a party girl, didn't drink, blah, blah, blah. January, 2000, January 25, 2013, the appeal court throws out Anthony's conviction for providing false information to law enforcement. The same day as a ruling, Anthony files for Chapter 7 bankruptcy protection. She claims to have almost $800,000 in liability. $800,000? Oh, because of like attorney fees? Did they not do pro bono? Which is a thousand in assets, including cash on hand on personal property. Jesus. Yeah, we I've, we definitely have to do a deep dive into this sometime.